I think it's this one. Yeah, okay. Just let me know if you, you can see my mouse as well, right? Okay. Uh, I will just present um, the, some slides of my master's thesis defense, uh, which was a little bit longer than 10 minutes, but I will try to uh, cut some uh, corners uh, because I don't need to explain everything. Um, what I did in my project was uh, I identified a set of metadata that is relevant for um, uh, a uh, bioinformatics workflow that I used as a use case. Um, uh, basically, I, I sort of envision this as a uh, uh, like uh, a situation that, that can be improved in the future is that uh, we have workflows that are executed. Um, we share the results of this workflow, and then uh, this should be in a format that makes it easier to review these results and uh, analyze its provenance. So it can be used as uh, input for other workflows. Uh, and uh, that's how the, the, the research cycle continues. And um, basically I focused on these two parts, which is uh, the format. Uh, in, in my case, I focused on CDBL workflows and CDBL prof, but uh, I think my results are also relevant for Arrowcrate. Um, for people who don't really know how CDBL prof research objects look like, it's, it's a, a research object format specific to CDBL. We have the workflow, the input data and the intermediate output data, and then RDF uh, descriptions of the, the, the aggregated resources following the prof data model. Um, and uh, what I looked at was that uh, I, I first identified a set of relevant metadata for one example workflow. Uh, in the field of bioinformatics, I um, came up with a list of provenance questions that are relevant for this workflow. And then I uh, tried to um, uh, see how easily these provenance questions could be answered from the, the, like the current version of CDL Prof. And for the, the questions that could not be answered easily, I tried to uh, design solutions to make it a little bit easier in the future. Um, this is the workflow that I um, used as an example. Uh, I, I'm not sure how many of you were in the general Arrowcrate meeting, but I, I briefly discussed it there. This is a deep learning model which can predict certain properties of, of proteins, uh, in this case, uh, binding sites. And the entire workflow that's, that's associated with it uh, calculates the input features and the input labels that are used um, uh, like and they, these are these are calculated from different data sources. What I did was I identified five use cases of research objects associated with this workflow. So the first is the workflow development because um, what might happen is that the workflow authors might test different workflow designs, or they uh, uh, run the workflow with different input data. And um, what you can do is compare the research objects from each run to see which uh, like combination of settings was the best. Uh, second use case was work workflow publication. Um, for example, it can be really helpful if you want to sort out the list of authors of your paper, uh, if you know exactly who worked on this workflow and what they did. Um, the third use case is if somebody reads the paper and they want to understand the workflow a little bit better, that they use the research object as a source for more information. If they're really convinced that the research uh, that's described is relevant for their own research, they can try to reproduce the workflow uh, on their own system before modifying it. And the fifth use case is a really advanced stage of the model lifetime. And that's if the, the, train, the trained uh, model is public, uh, published as a, um, as a service on a, on, a, like on a server somewhere where others can use the model to generate predictions for their own research. So in this case, you're not really interested in the, the background of the research anymore, but more about um, uh, what, what the model can do for you as a researcher. Uh, researcher. Um, considering these use cases, I came up with relevant questions for each of them. So for example, if we remove a certain input feature, what does it, how does it influence the performance of the model? Or, um, okay, this software is used, but where can I install it and which version was used? 
And to make it a little bit easier for myself, I try to categorize this question into six categories. Uh, the first is the scientific context, which is really related to the, um, the idea behind the research, such as the hypothesis or the interpretation of the data. The second is the data, for example, um, where, this, where can I download this data set if it was a subset of a database which query was used? Um, in the case of software, uh, where can I find the documentation, for example, or which version? Um, the fourth category is the workflow itself, which is similar to software, but it, it deserves to be its own category. And the fifth and sixth have to do with the system on which the workflow was executed, both hardware and software, and uh, details of the execution itself. For example, how long did it take to execute one particular step and how much resources uh, were consumed um, for this. Um, how I analyzed CDRPROV is, um, was not very um, straightforward because I needed to distinguish between different kinds of representation. So of course, um, obviously, if something is represented in RDF, we value it higher than when it's only um, uh, contained in the execution log where we cannot uh, uh, use a structured query to extract it. Uh, so uh, there are three levels, first RDF, uh, the last is unstructured, and the intermediate level is uh, still structured, but it's in a document that is specific to CDL workflows. So you cannot really, uh, you have to do some extra work before you can extract the information. And I looked at every category of the taxonomy that I just described, divided into subtypes. And from this, I made three main observations. The first is that in CDL workflows or in CDL research objects, the computational environment is severely underrepresented. It's almost missing. Um, only if you execute a step in a container, then there's some information on the image that was used, but it's very minimal. The second problem is that the RDF graph is incomplete. Uh, a lot of the information that is contained in the other documents is not also propagated to RDF, which is a pity because, um, as I said, RDF is uh, the representation, the kind of representation that we want. And as a solution, I um, designed an extension to this RDF graph to uh, accommodate these extra annotations. And the third problem was that even though a lot of information can be contained in the research object, it's only there if the workflow author supplied it manually. And currently there are no clear guidelines on how to uh, represent this information in a structured way. And the solution I designed for that is that I uh, made an annotation scheme for the input data, um, which can be used as a starting point for automation later. Um, yeah. And I think, um, this annotation scheme is um, like it's based on. I used bio schemas for this because it's already an, an, an established standard. And for each element from the provenance taxonomy, I found its associated uh, schema.org terms. If it wasn't already specified in bio schemas, I added extra schema.org terms to, for example, represent queries. And if people want to, convey information about the content of the, of, the, of the data, they can also use a domain-specific ontology such as EDEM. Um, and uh, this is an example of how I would use this annotation scheme in practice. So these are fields that are specific to CDL workflows. Um, this is, by the way, the input parameter file. What I the, the next three lines describe the minimal information that is necessary to unambiguously identify this data set. So that's the identifier, the version, if the identifier was not specific to the, the version itself, and a short description. And these are extra terms that, that give extra information about the data set. But in principle, they are already contained in, in the identifier itself. And uh, the last two lines, like they convey some information about the, like what this data actually is. So in this case, it's a protein structure and it's related to protein structure analysis. 
Um, what I also can do is represent the history of processed input data. So in this case, this is the input uh, data that was used for the workflow. But we represent its history by specifying that it's, it came from a search action on a database and that the resulting data set was then filtered with a filtered uh, uh, like a filtering tool. And that was actually the data set that was used in the workflow. And the last example is that uh, it can also be used to annotate an entire workflow run, uh, which can be really helpful if you have different resource objects associated with different workflow runs with slightly different input parameter values. It can be handy to um, have a way to, to uh, not confuse which is which. And that brings me to my conclusion. So in summary, I identified a set of metadata that is relevant uh, from a practitioner's perspective um, to represent in the provenance. And I did it based on one biophonetics workflow and we, instead of like a group of workflows. Um, I used this set of metadata to analyze the current version of CDRL prof And for um, some, I, like the, we identified some gaps and weakness, uh, like strength and weaknesses. And for the weaknesses, one of the weaknesses was that the RDF provenance graph was incomplete. So I designed an extension. I didn't really talk about it, but uh, I have extra slides so we can, I can show it later. And uh, because I identified sort of a, 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 a lack of clear guidelines how to represent input data, I used bioschemas to represent this information. And one of the, the, uh, like the future directions of this work could be to apply it to the our crate specification as well, because even though I used CDL workflows for my research, um, like this, this set of metadata is really related to the competency questions of the workflow run our crate profile as well. Um, and also the input annotation scheme um, can be uh, slightly adapted to, to it can be applied to our crate as well. Um, yeah, basically, this is my uh, what I wanted to uh, explain. Are there any questions? Okay, thanks, Ransky. So that the, the as we were also discussing the other time, maybe the so they they the the proposed the the, the planned contribution would be the application of the uh, I mean the 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 comp the additional requirements and the application of uh, the the profile to the the epitope prediction workflow, which is yes. a CW it's a CWL workflow, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Um. It still contains emulated steps. So this workflow is not yet publishable, but for the provenance uh, applications, it's, 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 it's correct. Like, so it's a bit, it, it's a workflow that's still in its, it, it's still in development, but I think it, it's far enough that it can be used as a use case for our grade as well. Okay, does anyone have any other questions? Just want to say, Wenske, this is very solid work. So I'm very, very. Thanks. Um, maybe a small question. Uh, if you can hear me well. Yeah. Okay. Um, so was the sort of missing information uh, in the RDF graph? Uh, did you also find missing elements in the specific um, output formats of the RDF? So TTL or... Um, Do you mean that, that they differ, the, 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 the different formats, the, like yeah. the information that was contained in JSON, for example, was not in Turtle? Yes. No, I did not specifically look at that, but I would be surprised if, if it differed because um, basically uh, like CDL2, I, I looked at CDL2 uh, workflow engine, they, they um, use prof library and basically yeah, you first gather the content the and then way. you output it as, as, a, as a specific mm -hmm. format. So I would be surprised if there's missing information there. Yeah. 
I, I also have a question. Sorry, I'm driving, so I hope you can hear me fine. Yes. Um, so how, how did you validate your requirements? Because you were presenting some, some requirements that you had got or some research questions that you had gathered, right? For, mm -hmm. for this particular workflow uh, and, and the domain, right? Because you hope, I guess you hope you, it, it, it aims to be generic too. So is there some kind of validation that, that you have run through to make sure that these requirements or research questions are comprehensive enough? Um, because, well, I'm bringing this up because, well, we, we were also, we have been working on, on requirements as well for the profiles. I was wondering if you had a look at those or, or not. Uh, I have looked at the competition, like the competency questions. Is that what you mean? Yes. Yeah. Um... Okay, I, I think I can still add some extra questions to that list um, mm -hmm. because I looked at only one workflow. I didn't um, make sure that it, was like, that it was representative or relevant to all workflows because that was not really the point. But I, so I'm not claiming that my list is complete, uh, but I, I think it's a, a good starting point and that a lot of the elements that are relevant for this workflow are also applicable to others. Right, right. So I, I, I am agree, I'm agreeing with you, but the question is how, how do you know that, that the requirements you have gathered, they are, uh, they are significant if, if you have validated them in just one workflow? I haven't validated them on others' workflows. So, that, that's correct. Um, but I, I, I have like I also have looked uh -huh. at the literature. So I didn't mention that explicitly. But like, for example, um, the question, what is a data? Like, what is this data? Um, you also have to know something about data citation. So I looked at, um, like, uh, for example, that, that that's previous work on data citation. That that for example. A data set is identified mm -hmm. with an identifier, a version uh, that you need to know where to, yeah, where to download it, for example, all, all that kind of information. But I, I haven't really uh, applied my taxonomy to other workflows. But that could be a, a good other uh, future. Well, no, I think I think that I think that's fine, right? You you have your use case, and and it's important for your project. So I guess I guess everyone has their own requirements. What I was wondering too is. It's like, uh, you know, sometimes we tend to work uh, with a community and, and then we, uh, we put the requirements of that community in front of us. So I was wondering if you had like also been collaborating uh, with someone or, or other oh. scientists that have these specific questions in mind too, right? Yes, well, I discussed the use cases with, with the workflow authors. So I know that, uh -huh. that they want to publish it as, as a service later, right? So that, that, that was the fifth use case. Uh -huh. So I didn't come up with these on my own. I, I really discussed with like, what, what is the goal of this research? How, where do you want to uh, take it? Um, and then I looked uh -huh. at the literature as well to, to identify how like relevant questions. So for example, um, uh, if you want to identify version of uh, software, you need to know the version. So it was a bit okay. of both. I didn't sit just okay. in the room and-, so, and uh, Okay, so, sorry, I think I have to interrupt this. So maybe we can discuss this further at uh, uh, one of the our next meetings, but we're running a bit late. It's already 25 minutes in. So, uh, uh, okay, well- All right, uh, well, Simone, I just wanted to thank, uh, I, I just wanted to thank the speaker. Thank you for, okay. for your answer. Thank you. Yes, sure. 